All right, good morning, everyone. So, says Rabbi Yezer, um, warm yourselves by the fire of the, uh, of the sages. But be very careful that you don't burn yourself on their glowing coals. Because if you come too close and you burn yourself, you get too close in some way or another. Because their bite is like the bite of a fox. And their sting is like the sting of a scorpion. And their bite is like the bite of a snake. The poison is like the poison of a snake. All of their words are like um, coals on fire. Well, what does this mean, for goodness sake? What is it that we are afraid of? Surely one should imbibe the words of the sages, take them to heart. And yet Rabbi Leza is saying, just be very careful about just how close you come. I don't think he is suggesting over here that if you become too involved in religion, you become a little bit more sugar. He doesn't need to tell us that because we know that already. But there's something here about the attitude that we have to take towards the Chachamim, the sages from whom we're learning. We have to warm ourselves by their fire, meaning to say that they, their words will warm us and give us uh, tremendous strength and, and uh, faith and uh, a real sense of connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and wisdom and understanding about the, the world and, and about our lives. But if we try to impose upon them our own understanding and try and say, well, this is what they really meant, and you try to put it into your own context and to say it's... Um, uh, that um, they were just saying what they're saying because of the historical context in which they lived um, or because of their own certain, certain personal circumstances. Uh, and I can understand that and put it into a different kind of context. What's going to be happening is that you're going to be distorting their words. You don't understand who these people were. Don't try and make yourself your own brain like them. Don't imagine that you really have a handle and a, a grasp of what they are truly saying. Just be, have sufficient intellectual humility to stand at a slight distance and to say, you know, I take their words, I'm warmed by them, but I don't want to pretend that I've got inside their heads. Because if we do that, then we're going to distort what they have to offer and our Judaism is going to become a distorted Judaism and our own path in life is going to become a distorted one. And that's like the bite of a snake. It's a poison that gets inside of you. And you don't even feel it at the outset. But over a period of time, even a short period of time, you suddenly realize that you have been poisoned. And so the sages said in the Talmud, or the Talmud says, if the early sages were angels, then we are men. But if we consider the early sages to be ordinary men, then we are donkeys. I mean to say that just like a donkey is going to spend its life eating and drinking and braying without any sense of higher purpose, if we simply bring those chachamim down to the, to the level of ordinary men, as we are ordinary men, then we are going to take nothing from them. We're not going to be enlivened by them. We're not going to be inspired by them. We're not going to be lifted by them. But if we see them as angels beyond where we are as, in terms of our humanness, at a different level altogether, a different thought process, a different kind of spirituality, then we can take from them and be inspired from them and we can become men in the sense that we can have the dignity of men to be able to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the very best way. And so there's this cautionary um, piece of advice from Rabbi Yezer, just to remind us that we're not dealing with ordinary people when we learn from the sages and to be careful to hold them at a slight distance because that's the only way we can really benefit from them. That's the way we are warmed by them and grow from their wisdom and their understanding.